This is the Vortex 8 by Cream Source. And it's an absolute sky panel killer. Do I even need to talk about anything else? The IP65 rating alone should sell you on this light. For those of you who don't fully understand what an IP rating is, let's look at the chart. This means that the light has been certified first digit under intrusion protection as a six, which is totally dust tight, full protection against dust and other particulates, including a vacuum seal tested against continuous airflow. That's pretty good. And second digit under moisture protection as a five, protection against low pressure jets of directed water from any angle. This means that this baby can go in the rain at any angle. This is now your go-to exterior light, hands down for the IP rating alone. It's what we've all been waiting for for years. And rental houses, take note because the easier it is to clean and maintain your gear when you own dozens or hundreds of fixtures, the more time and money you save. After living in a dusty stage, just hose the light down to clean it. How incredible is that? The sky panel has had its reign for six years and hats off to them, that is an incredible achievement. I mean, wow, what an amazing ROI. They completely revolutionized set lighting along with Astera and congrats to them. But as set lighting has continued to evolve, it really needed an update and instead of refreshing it, Airy took a gamble on the orbiter. Cream Source took the opportunity, listened to customer feedback, and I think perfected the soft panel light design in what would be the evolution of the next gen sky panel. From the bent yoke to accommodate soft boxes for that extra tilt you always wanted to the built in ballast, internal antennas, and eight pixels of incredible brightness with ethernet, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and CRMX, I just don't know what else you can put in this fixture. Actually I do, and it's a very minor thing, but let's dive into what makes this fixture stand out from every other panel light on the market. Starting with the shell, this has obviously been designed by engineers who either worked on set or really listened and understood their end users because this is one of the most robust and well thought out chassis I've ever seen on a light. And the ballast is built in. <clears throat> in case you didn't hear that, let me repeat. The ballast is built in. It's just this and a power con. That's all we want a light to be on a professional film set. And guess what? It weighs the same as an S60 coming in at just under 38 pounds. The rubber corners are well thought out and it just feels like a tank in the best way possible. We've all seen sky panels carted around on muscle carts or thrown in hampers and shuttled around on rocky terrain. And if they could withstand that abuse with their frame, I have no doubt the Vortex will have no problem being the new workhorse on sets around the world with their upgraded frame. Now get this, the aluminum yoke is actually quick release, which is such a nice feature for those unique rigging situations where you may want to swap the yoke out for something else. The corners also have 3 8 threads for rigging points. So there's a ton of cool options here. Cream Source has chosen to continue with the filter rails like the sky panel, but they doubled down. So now you can put two accessories in at the same time, such as their standard 60 degree diffuser and a honeycomb or a dome in it. The 650 watt RGBW panel without a diffuser has a natural 20 degree beam angle, which is how it gives a whopping 
13,900 lux or 1,291 foot candles at three meters or about 10 feet at 5,600 Kelvin. In comparison, the Sky Panel S60, which I tested and put a meter in front of at 10 feet, same size light, only gives you 1,292 lux or 120 foot candles at that same range. It was actually slightly better than what the website says it produces. Now that's a bit of an unfair comparison because I'm comparing a bare, more focused light against an S60 with a standard diffuser. However, you can't use an S60 without a diffuser or intensifier, but the Vortex with the standard diffuser also came in at 120 foot candles, so it's the same output. But the cool thing is you now have that option to get a ridiculous amount of power out of the light, whereas you don't have that option with an S60. Also, just as a side note, an S360 gives you 5,133 lux or 477 foot candles at 10 feet. Or does it? Check out my last video to see what I'm talking about. So depending on the situation, the Vortex 8 could even be your new S360 replacement in some scenarios. And if you saw my last video on the issues S360s bring, this would be a wiser choice in general. It would sure be a lot easier to use on set or rig to a lift and not have to worry about it getting wet. The Vortex is flicker free up to 5,000 FPS in high speed mode, which even allows you to dim the light, which is something you can't do on an S60 and it has eight pixels for multi-cell configuration. Attention all gaffers, poor man's process with soft panels is back on the menu. Looking at the ports on the back, you can see they all have caps for their IP rating. So make sure you are using those certified watertight cables like their Nutrik Top True One power cable that comes with the light. You have AC and DC power inputs. There's no power pass through and that's probably because the light is max eight amps. So you could only daisy chain to one other light which makes a pass through kind of pointless. Believe it or not, you can actually power this with a battery and get it to 100% brightness, but it's going to draw 13.5 amps at 48 volts. So that's something to consider. However, you can actually set the power limit for how much this unit will draw in case you do end up using less capable batteries, which is a really convenient feature. I can see this being used in a run and gun situation where you wanted a light deep in the background of a night exterior shot and didn't have any power run back there. So you take a vortex and maybe a less capable battery. Pretty cool. So you have DMX in and out, a cream source proprietary accessory port, USB-A and ethernet for networking this baby. I personally would have loved to have seen an ethernet switch built in so you could daisy chain fixtures with data, but not a big deal. The USB-A allows you to power a DMX receiver or update the firmware of the fixture and the accessory port connects to some of Cream Source's cool remotes and triggers where you can sync this to a digital cinema camera sensor for frame accurate strobing to bypass the CMOS banding issues that you experience whenever you do strobing on camera. If we dig into their menu system, there's some stuff I wanna point out that is just really good. First, it is fantastically simple and easy to use. One super cool feature that was implemented as a feature request by Scott Barnes is that you can have user DMX presets, which is a one button access to reconfiguring the light into a different mode, address, and even pixel count. It's called the Barnes button. And if you don't know Scott Barnes, you gotta follow him on Instagram. He is one of the top programmers in the industry. And what he often does is patch the light twice in his console, once as a single pixel unit under say fixture 101, and then as a multi-pixel unit under a different fixture number like 1001, so that he can flip between the two if he's trying to save on addresses for a particular location. So each light would in essence get two labels, one for the single pixel version and the other for the multi-cell profile. The ability to have a set electrician quickly reconfigure the light by just switching DMX presets allows for that light to be a one pixel configuration in one scene and then be quickly remapped to be a multi-cell light for that fire effect that the DP now wants. Oh, and check out this nifty feature. When it's receiving DMX, it has this DMX home screen, which shows you all of the relevant info about the light. If it's in single pixel mode, it will give you a readout of the incoming DMX in relation to it, the mode it's in. And if it's in pixel mode, it will give you a quick graphical overview of the pixel configuration. There are quick access buttons to the dim curve, smoothing, and DMX presets, and this link button gets you straight to the menu for any and all networking or DMX settings. It is brilliantly intuitive. 
I also love that they have a priority of inputs. So hardwired DMX is top priority, then network if you are sending SACN or ArtNet, then CRMX, and finally their accessory port. That's great because you don't want these things competing with each other if you have multiple things plugged into the same unit, which happens in some devices today. Rest assured, CreamSource has you covered, and that goes a long way when you run into these weird issues on set with different lights that can take a while to figure out. They've obviously taken some expert advice from some top programmers in the industry, so you don't experience any of these annoyances from the past. Shout out to Dan Walters. But don't take it from me, just look at how this light is being used all around the world. With all of that packed into the vortex, the only place they have left to go is eventually adding more diodes as the industry decides what is the best makeup of an LED array. Is it RGBWW, RGBACL? It's a battle we have yet to fight. I can tell you this definitely gets my highest recommendation for panel lights and the only thing stopping cream source is their distribution. Can they get these out fast enough? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps my channel out and consider subscribing for new updates. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.